Daniel chapter 2. Now, this is not second chapter of Acts. I get it. You know, Pentecost, you could talk about second chapter of Acts, but I really just felt that the Lord wanted me to share with you that if those moments in your life that you regret, many times it's because you were hijacked. And when you're hijacked, there's a, there's a domino effect that happens. Anybody ever been worried about losing a job? Yeah, see, a lot of hands going up. And if you think you're going to get fired, is it easy to sleep or hard to sleep? Yeah. So that's one of those good measuring sticks about your inner peace is if you're having a hard time sleeping. It's not the only reason, but it could be one of the reasons is that you're really worried about something and it's eating away at you, right? And... We just have to be open to the Lord in the midst of those times because he says, I give my beloved rest. That's a promise of the Lord, that we get sweet sleep and rest and that we don't have to fall victim to being hijacked by our emotions. It's that wonderful cliche. It's not even a cliche. It's so true. I may not know what the future holds, but I know who holds my future. And when you really believe that, this is all just a passing thing. It's a temporary affliction. And yes, don't, don't totally ignore it. You got to deal with that thing. But it's like, no, you're not hijacking me and robbing me of my sleep. Because three or four days of no sleep, and all of a sudden, you're a whole different mess you were than three days ago. Because it dominoes. And then all of a sudden, you're saying more things that are offending other people because you're tired and you're cranky and you're easily agitated and you're worried about your job. And look, I'm not saying don't be worried about your job, but give it to the Lord. All right, so this says in Daniel chapter 2, it was the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and what happened? His spirit was so troubled that what? Sleep left him. So we don't know yet what the dream is, but we know he is rattled. He is really hijacked. Has your boss ever been really rattled? Guess who gets kicked? <laughs> you. <laughs> Right? Like a lot of times when they're having a bad day, they take it out on you. And we're going to see what happens. I just wanted to give you a little clip here just to make the point that I want to make. So I just want you to hear Joseph Garlington first. He just wants to hear from you. Jim Crabb was working on his new storefront church in New York City. And he had the audacity to name it Almighty God Tabernacle. It's a Saturday evening and he was making it pretty. So he decided he would call his wife just to see what she was doing. And he said the phone rang and it rang and it rang and it rang and no answer, so he hung up. He said he came home and he said, why didn't you answer the phone? She said, it didn't ring. He said, oh yeah, I called the house. He said, it rang and it rang and it rang. She says, honey, that phone never rang. So he put it aside because they were, in, they were not in agreement. He knew he had called her, and she said, you didn't. We were talking about that at the table. That morning, he's back in his office, and his phone rings. The phone in that office, it rings, and, and he picks it up, and the guy says, who is this? He says, I'm, I'm the pastor. He said, why did you call me Saturday? He said, I didn't call you Saturday. He said, yes, you called me. And the phone rang, and it rang, and it rang, and it rang, but I refused to answer. He said, well, why? He said, I was standing on a chair with a noose around my neck, and I was getting ready to take my life, and I said, God, if you don't want me to take my life, give me an indication. And I saw the phone ring, and I went, and I saw the ID on the phone that said, Almighty God, tabernacle. <laughs> Didn't say tabernacle because that was too much, but it said Almighty God. He said I was afraid to answer. <laughs> Woo. See, that's a Holy Ghost assignment right there, don't you think? I mean, I cried when I saw that. I did. It just so touched me that God would love us that much. Right, like just, there's an old gospel song that said, he might not be there when you want him, but he's right on time. And then the girls say, right on, right on. He might not be there when you want him, but he's right on time. Right on, right on. Oh, pretty good. 
Not as good as earlier, but we're working on it. Got to warm you up. So this guy thinks he's calling his wife. He dials one digit off, and it rings to a guy with a noose around his neck. And he called his church, Awesome God Tabernacle. It's Mighty God, sorry. He's awesome too. <laughs> and that intervention was enough to save somebody's life. What seems so random, but Holy Spirit's not random. So let's follow the promptings. Are you going to be right 100% of the time? No. But if you know your identity in Christ, you don't need to be right 100% of the time because you're secure in who you are in Christ and you know how to recognize his voice. All right, so we said um, second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, he had dreams and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. And then the king gave the command to call the magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king, and he said, I've had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. That's called hijacked, right? He's not thinking about anything else on his agenda. Every other appointment got canceled. Uh, he has stopped everything until he can find somebody that can tell him what happened in this dream. Have you ever been there? Just say yes. <laughs> and do the other people always have sympathy for you? No, but you're not the king. <laughs> when this happens to the king... Everybody else has to drop everything they're doing because until he gets this answer, nothing else is going to be dealt with. You have to be that spirit-filled Christian like Daniel was to know how to handle that situation. And I skipped a couple of verses because then he gets to them. They, they basically say, look, you, you're not even telling us your dream to interpret it. You want us to tell us what you dreamed and then what it means. Come on, nobody's ever done that. And he says, look, my decision is firm in verse 5. If you don't make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you will be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made an ash heap. I really don't care much about my house if I've been cut in pieces, but okay, my family cares. However, if you tell me the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, there's not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It's a difficult thing that the king requests, and there's no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Somebody say, sorry, you're wrong about that. We serve a God who does dwell in the flesh. That's called Holy Spirit. That's the gift. It's good for you, Jesus said, if I go. Because if I go, I can send the comforter. And part of that comfort is you're going to be able to sleep in the middle of a storm, just like I did in the back of the boat. When you guys were all freaking out, thinking you were going to die, you found me sleeping in the back of the boat. Because when he's inside of you, even in the midst of the storm, you can rest. Beautiful, isn't it? If that's true. When it, when it is in you, people have heart attacks over this stuff. People's hearts fail them because of fear. And as Christians, we have a better weapon than that. We have Holy Spirit on the inside. As bleak as it might look, that guy's ready to hang himself. And a wrong number calls. Stops him. Oh, God help us. Right on time. Okay, so the decree went out and they began killing the wise men. All right, they were already killing the wise men. They sought Daniel and his companions. And then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch the captain of the king's guard who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. And, and he answered and said to Arioch, King, why is the decree of the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. <laughs> Apparently he got that time because in 17 it says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Or we would know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? That they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret. Come on, say that with me. That they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret. We are jammed up right now, guys. Don't be planning your vacation. Because <laughs> if we don't get the answer to this secret, there ain't going to be no vacation. Some of the other people have already been killed. But I asked the king for a favor, so he's going to give us till tomorrow to try to crack this code. Okay? So I'll see you in the morning, and we'll compare notes in the morning. And you're staring in bed, staring at the ceiling, because you're thinking you're going to die. 
And you ever notice that? You forget something, and the harder you try to remember it, the harder it is to remember. <laughs> or uh, you try to remember a song, and there's another song playing. And you're like, oh, please, shut that off. Shut that off. But when you're hijacked, you can't shut the song off, can you? Because that's all that's playing. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. Now, you know, he got this vision, Daniel. We know that because if you study the Bible, you know that he does live, right? But I believe there's, I'll just read a little bit further. It says in verse uh, 18, that they might seek the mercies from God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Now here's how I picture it, and I did some reading on it to see what other people have said about it. And you could get a vision while you're staring at the ceiling, right, because you can't fall asleep. But it, the, the, the way that you could interpret this word is that it was a dream. So one skeptic might say, no, there's no way he could have slept in that in that time because he'd have been too afraid. There's another way that says, no, he was so secure in the Lord, my version, that he did go to sleep. And isn't that beautiful? That, that you could be that at, uh, at ease with your relationship with God, that as, as worried as you might be about something, that you could still sleep. And you can get a dream, and God gives you the interpretation of the dream. Or how about a third version? God gives you the other guy's dream. <laughs> Could God do that? We know somebody who said it happened to them, Phil Zaldotti, but he was here. He, he, and he spoke to the person that, who was given the interpretation to it, said, yeah, God brought me into your dream. Now, that might freak somebody out here. I'm not trying to scare anybody. Look, this is God we're talking about. There's no limits on what his possibilities are. One way or another, we know that Daniel got the interpretation of the dream.